Hey guys, uh, it's been a while. Hope you're all having a good holiday. Mine's been really nice so far. I've been hanging out with the family and uh, doing some bike stuff in between. A quick update, my current build, the long tail build, has uh, gone through some drivetrain changes. I swapped out the BMX 110 millimeter hub and laced in a 135 millimeter single speed hub uh, I'll explain in more detail why I did this uh, in the next build video. So changing the hub caused me to have to change some other things. And um, long story short, that's why the video is taking a while. Thanks for hanging in there guys and I hope, then, I hope to get the next video out sometime shortly after the new year. Okay, let's get to the topic of this video. First, a quick disclaimer, if you don't care about bicycle frame jigs, you will probably find this video pretty boring, so you might want to skip this one, but if boredom is your thing, then stick around. Alright, so on occasion, I get uh, messages from folks building their own jigs, and the question I get asked frequently is what would I change about the bicycle frame jig that I built? There are two things I plan to change, and one thing that I might or might not change, but it's worth bringing up. Okay, so uh, for the first thing, right now my C-tube and bottom bracket sub-assembly rotates at uh, 160 millimeters above the bottom bracket center. I would change this so that it rotates at the bottom bracket center. Change number two, I would also change the rotation of the head tube sub-assembly. Currently it's rotating about 30 millimeters above the bottom of the head tube. I would change this so that it rotates right at the head tube's bottom in the center. I won't get into uh, design details of how to machine these changes, most of you guys have your own designs and likely deviated from my design. And with that said, my design isn't really even my design. I based mine off of uh, Tanner W's Instructables, which is still up on the Instructables website, and I'll have that link in the description. So uh, Tanner W's design is based on the Arctos jig. And the Arctos jig is based on probably some other jig, but I, I won't go back that far. Okay, there is one thing I'd like to show you guys about the head tube sub-assembly and how to get it to rotate at the bottom of the head tube. You can see here that I have a cone that centers the head tube on the bottom. And depending on the head tube's diameter, the head tube will sit higher or lower on this cone, thus throwing off the head tube's ability to sit in a constant position at the desired rotation point. To get around this issue, I would replace the cone with a flat cylindrical base. And this would keep the bottom of the head tube at the same height no matter what size the head tube uh, you throw in there. Now for the reason I would make these changes. It would make setup so much easier than what I've currently got. In BikeCAD, there is the uh, Jig Setup tab on the Dimensions panel. The options I use are Head Tube Bottom X and Head Tube Bottom Y. Both of these measurements are based off of the bottom bracket center. So if I have the bottom bracket center at a fixed position such that it always rotates on its center, I can easily measure these distances using the spine of the jig. I could uh, even have a ruler on the jig. Uh, right now the assembly rotation point is above the bottom bracket, so uh, the position of the bottom bracket relative to the spine of the jig changes when I rotate the assembly, and that is why I cannot use a rule on the spine of the jig. As for the head tube assembly, all the same stuff applies. If the head tube's bottom is fixed at the rotation point of the assembly, then again I can use a ruler, but it's not, so I can't use it. 
I have found a way to set up the jig in its current configuration, but it involves math and a triangle calculator. And uh, it's not convenient at all. It takes like way longer than it should to set up. So yeah, I'll be making these modifications at some point in the future. Now on to the third change, which is more based in paranoia than fact, but I'll show you guys anyway. When designing a part or assembly, you will sometimes run into that gray area where designing it one way or another may or may not make it more structurally sound and or accurate. In this case, for what I'm about to show you, it's more about accuracy. And uh, because I have not tested any of this, it's mostly based on a hunch. And uh, that hunch tells me that I may be only sacrificing two or two to four thousandths of an inch, which is not a big deal and is probably the reason I won't actually follow through on this change. But if I were to make a whole new jig, I would very likely change this part of the design. And that part is how I attached the two sub assemblies to the jig. I drilled straight through the extrusion and mounted them up with an M8 screw to illustrate why this is probably not the best way to mount the extrusion, we'll take a look at a side view of the extrusion. In this view, you can see it's basically an X pattern, and uh, the extrusion was specifically designed to be attached to things and have things attached to it by inserting a flat nut inside its channel. Uh, these little wings are uh, designed to take the pressure of that nut without compromising the extrusion's uh, structure. So let's take a look at how I've attached my extrusion. I sent a screw straight through it and uh, the cap of the screw rests above the extrusion's center. So when I apply force to the screw to attach the extrusion to the jig, it compresses the extrusion in a way that was not, uh, it was not designed for this. It was not intended to be uh, tightened in this way. And that is likely throwing accuracy off by uh, several thousandths of an inch. Okay guys, I hope this was uh, useful to you if you're out there building your own jig. I'll have links to uh, Tanner W's Instructables in the description and uh, some other links in there. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys sometime around the new year. If not, happy new year and uh, see you guys later. You know what? I changed my mind uh, about the head tube assembly. I think I would not use a flat cylinder at its base. Instead, I would uh, still use a cone and uh, a cone would more reliably center the bottom of the tube, whereas a flat surface would rely on the facing on the bottom of the tube, and I don't trust that. So I would probably copy the Arctos jig uh, yet again. And uh, on the website, Nine Little Tubes, there is a pic of a jig from UBI. The bottom cone is uh, height adjustable. I would do this. Okay, I'm done. See you guys later. See you guys next year. Actually, uh, one last thing I almost forgot. If you guys are not already, you should follow Cobra Frames on Instagram. And he is, as I speak, building a frame jig, which is, I think it's based on the Arctos jig. I'm not positive, but I think it is. And uh, he's posting pics of his progress there. So give him a follow if you want to see how his jig turns out. All right, see you guys later.